Welcome back. Today we are going to take a look at the LUT Shower D13. So before we begin, I do want to thank Hi-Fi Go for sending me this review sample, as well as the two dongles from Muse Hi-Fi. So many thanks to them for sending these to me, and do check them out when you're looking for IEMs or accessories such as dongles. So the D13, the 13 in the D13, of course, actually stands for a 13 millimeter dynamic driver, which is hiding behind this, uh, you know, very nice looking blue case, kind of a blue anodized aluminum case, I guess is what it is. So actually quite nice, very small shell, very comfortable, um, perhaps too small if you're used to wearing a, a bigger IEM. It's actually a very small round shell. I mean, you kind of have to, at least I do, I have to kind of push it in to make sure it's in because it's a little smaller than what I was expecting and the way it fits around your ear and in your ear so it takes a, another second to make sure the fit is right but uh, um, very nice shell so the cable itself is actually a nice little copper shell nothing too fancy but uh, quite nice box is uh, kind of nice uh, got some specs on the back and inside the box you'll actually find this case which is sort of a standard IAM looking case and it's got their name on it and there's a couple sets of tips in there and this, these are the nozzle uh, replaceable nozzle tips which actually change the upper mids lower treble uh, slightly so this is the gold one in the bag and there is a silver one that's uh, actually installed already so that was the one that I ended up using was the silver one so that is that so let's kind of jump right into it and we'll try to go through this one a little quicker so it is bigger better right this is a 13 millimeter dynamic driver uh, should do something special right with base or something else um, so I would say that what they did uh, here it, it can actually rumble if you have a very sub bass heavy track it'll definitely shake your ear a little bit but it, I would call it a half commitment to big bass fun sound they didn't actually boost the uh, mid bass a whole lot so you get quite a bit of rumble but the rest of it uh, actually kind of drops off a little quicker to keep the mids a little cleaner so that brings up the next point. So is there another compelling reason to buy a 13 millimeter, you know, one dynamic driver like the D13? And um, I think that's a harder question. I think they had their shot to make a big base set uh, or you do a very clean set. You do something that other dynamic drivers in, in the smaller categories couldn't really pull off. You have to do something compelling or unique. And I think that's a, kind of where the D13 falls a little short. So second place where it falls short is stage. Stage is my multiplier. It can make a bad set a little more enjoyable and it makes a good set not as good. And that's really what happened here. Uh, I think the, the D13 is distractingly small uh, in stage. So they really should have addressed that at this price point. It, I'm not sure there's any reason why they released it with a stage that was noticeably small as they did, especially at the price point that they hit. So as I said, Hi-Fi Go actually sent two dongles, so we'll kind of go through these uh, super quick. So this is the M1 dongle, and it is a small 3.5 millimeter Type-C, uh, tiny. There's actually a little Realtek uh, DAC in it. So this one um, basically sounds a little low res and a little bassy, which isn't a good match for this guy. It's sort of it ends up being um, a little more muddy bass with, but there's no background noise, which was good. So this is the M1 Smart, and the M1 Smart, um, if you look at the back specs and you say, wow, I wonder what kind of DAC is in this one. They don't spell out which, which DAC is in it. They don't spell it on the website. But if you actually dig into it, it's called a Best 3001 C100, and I think that was Best Tech Inc. It's, it's actually kind of a hard, hard one to find, but I would definitely say that this one is cleaner there's definitely more treble which pairs better with with d13 but there's some kind of wicked background hiss uh, maybe that's particular to d13 i'll find out next i'm going to review the trn st5 which also came from hi-fi go so we'll give the uh, m1 smart a second chance to see if uh, the background noise goes away but uh, kind of at first glance it sounds pretty good there's just some uh, annoying background noise there so what does D13 sound like, and we'll take a look at the graph, and you can kind of see basically what it looks like. It's kind of this fun UV-ish uh, shape. 
Uh, depending on how sensitive you are here, it'll sound a little more U-shaped because it, it actually drops down quite a bit right in the mid bass. So there's not a whole lot of energy carrying in through your mid. So I think it actually sounds a little more like a U-shape instead of a V-shape, but definitely some really nice elevation here, some nice elevation here, and then it, and it trails off here. So no fatiguing, kind of no sibilance. It actually does uh, roll off in the upper treble uh, pretty quickly. So we'll get all get into all of that in a bit here. So UV, fun shape. Tried to make the bass fun, but keep it clean, like I said. So they drop off the mid bass kind of quickly. So bass wise, like I said, it's a 13 millimeter dynamic driver. Uh, the sub bass is definitely fun, uh, but mostly it's kind of sort of a one trick pony for me. I mean, after you listen to a couple tracks with sub bass, you're like, oh, that's pretty cool. But then when you get to the rest of your playlist, and my playlist doesn't really hit sub bass all that hard, it sort of it all kind of goes away because you're sort of left hearing the mid bass, which is at a um, sort of a lowered, more reasonable level. So the mid bass level, like I said, is just less fun and it drops down quickly and it doesn't really carry that much fun into the mids. So the fun that you hear on a couple of tracks doesn't necessarily carry through um, through the rest of the bass. And that's why I said it was it's a bit of a half commitment to a big bass set. I think they probably would have been better off. Uh, I don't know. The quality is actually is quite nice, like I said, but the level should have either been more or less. You know, either go for more fun or go for a much cleaner sound. Um, they picked this middle level, so you have a lot of sub bass emphasis, but the rest of it sort of sounds a little on the leaner side, and then they raise the upper mids, and it makes it a little bit even more lean. So yeah, it's kind of a bizarre middle ground. So not enough for bass heads, and too much for some genres. And that'll kind of make you dip into this and uh, look at the tip roll. So they actually include a pair of uh, sort of wider. The white is, I think, a wider bore, and the black is a more narrow bore. So do check those out. Um, you'll figure out which uh, base level works for you. But uh, I think that was probably a good move, giving you two different styles. Because the base, like I said, is right in the middle. So the tips will kind of push you in either direction. So the mid's definitely not as warm and not as weighty as I was expecting with a big DD, um, but definitely on the more cleaner, lighter side, and it's definitely pulled up by the mids. And this mid is just pulled up a little early. This is about 2K, and maybe it's a little after, depending on what, what graph you're looking at. But the way this rises just a little bit, even you know a little earlier than Harmon 2019, you know that that's just going to have a weird sound to it, um, compared to kind of this heavier bass, lighter mid bass, and then this even lighter kind of in your face uh, early rise there. So, you know, I, I get that they were probably going for um, that resolution and detail to keep those on the higher side. And with dynamic driver, that's actually a pretty good move. Um, but I think it, it ended up just forcing the mids into a more V-shape and they sort of sound a little more recessed, a little more recessed than it should. So like I was just talking about, there's really a trade-off there between keeping your mids clean and um, with such you know little mid bass, the way they carry through that, and then your upper mids. So, you know, I think they really traded fun for clean there and the, mid, the cleaner mids is definitely great but it's also easier to hear the problems. And, and here you just hear this recessed midsection, recessed vocals, not as transparent or open as it should sound, and really not too much texture in the vocals. So not really bad by any means, but you know, I don't think it really met my price expectations, um, just the way it's tuned. I'm not, I'm not, sh not sold on the way they tuned it um, and how it sits on this dynamic driver. That was the optimal way to tune it. It, everything just feels a little forced and a little bit out of place. It's sort of like gears not quite meshing and everything is just a little bit off here. So, and the same thing, if you like to turn it up, if you like a little bit of volume to hear your ear shake a little more, that early rise in the upper mids is going to prevent you from doing that. It just gets a little bit sharper, especially at uh, higher volumes. It's just, just a little bit too early. They should have pushed it out just a little bit. 2.5, 3, and, you know, anything would have, would have really helped that situation. So the treble, like I said, it rises a bit early, 
which doesn't help staging and it feels forced. Um, I'm not sure why they, I mean, I know why they raise it so early because it gives you more of a sense of detail and uh, resolution, but I think sensitive ears are going to find it's just a bit too forward. But after 2K, it tilts down into a more forgiving, kind of relaxed territory, which was actually a good move. I definitely am, am fond of that move because your electric guitar, since none of that stuff symbols, nothing really goes out of place, and it kind of gently rolls off. So it extends nicely, um, but it, it definitely needs a little bit more air, and, and air is of the same way as stage. It's a mini multiplier. It can definitely give a DD uh, more dynamic sound, more texture, um, just a little extra from your typical DD, and this one tends to not have really enough air, and, and it just kind of falls a little bit flat. And then lastly, like stage, I'm not going to harp on this too much, but uh, very much between the ears, which is uh, very questionable at this price point, and basically the, the instruments are either right in the center or stuck to your ears. It's a very binary sound to it at the stage. And a bigger stage would definitely have transformed this set from uh, kind of merely okay playback to something more of an experience, which uh, is really what it's lacking. So that's what I got on the D13. So again, thank you guys for tuning in, and I will see you next time.